We are in an engine compartment of a 1970 440 six pack, a real V code 446 pack CUDA. Uh, this car is really, really a nice car. And to even sweeten things even up a little bit more, this guy is a three pedal car. It's a four speed with the data. Heavy duty 26 inch Mopar radiator on it. Uh, clutch fan on it, just the way it should be from the factory. Power steering and power brakes, discs in the front. Um, the heat is still hooked up into the uh, passenger compartment. It has the correct radiator shroud on it. it. has the original style alternator on it. Correct 1970 exhaust manifolds on this car. Uh, very, very rare. Most guys threw headers on these cars through the years. This one still retains its original exhaust manifolds. It does have a tri-power setup on it underneath the shaker hood. It takes a little bit to get this guy off, but there is uh, a tri-power setup. Three two-barrel Hollies on an aluminum intake manifold. Um, really a great car. Wait, let me correct myself there. 70 should have a cast iron on it. And it does. It has a cast iron uh, intake manifold for the tri-power setup. Um, original core support on it. The car's never been in any trouble. It, it retains its original Mopar fender tag with all the designation of its uh, option list. Uh, I don't see anything at all. It has an electronic ignition box. Everything appears to be correct and original on this vehicle. There's nothing that's been modified in this engine compartment whatsoever. Uh, the inner fender panels are just as nice and clean and sharp as they should be, painted yellow just the way the uh, exterior of the car is. It has the original metal shaker hood on it, original fiberglass uh, uh, shaker system on it with all the uh, uh, baffling and uh, uh, rubber seals and everything for it, just the way it would have come from Mopar in 1970. Fantastic engine compartment. These motors were rated at 390 horsepower, grossly underrated. These cars would always run toe-to-toe -to -toe or in front of a 426 Hemi, a stock 426 Hemi. Cars were very strong power-wise. Uh, this guy being a four-speed car, very, very desirable item. Let's go around the rest of it and see what we can show you. Today we have a really, really special guest. Um, one of the most uh, uh, revered muscle cars in history has been a Hemi Cuda. And this is this far away from being a Hemi Cuda. It's a 446 pack, a real V code 446 pack Cuda. And one of the best combinations you could get and a three pedal car, four speed car. So we're going to go over the outside of it, see if we can find any defects, any faults on it. Uh, we're going to do a complete presentation of this car. We're going to take a little bit more time uh, just because of the vehicle that it is. So let's get started. Paint on this car is just a foot deep. I can't, there's no way you can see from the video how nice the paint is on this vehicle. It's absolutely beautiful. Real nice deep finish to it. The hood lines up just as sweet as can possibly be. You can see that there's a little over an eighth inch gap, or about an eighth inch gap, the whole way around this transitions the whole way to the base of the windshield. Shaker hood. This definitely, this is attached to the engine, obviously. Uh, opening in the hood. It does move whenever the engine torques. That's why I call it a shaker. Uh, it is a cold air induction system. This thing is a functional cold air induction system to help this guy breathe and give it some nice cold air to breathe. So it makes a lot more horsepower. Uh, the hood itself, there's no defects, no marks, uh, no deviations that I can detect anywhere on it. And again, you know, the paint is just as nice and sweet as can possibly be. The correct round edge hood pins with it, uh, stainless steel, of course. Optional light package, it does have the uh, turn signal indicators model on the front uh, uh, fenders. Grill area, this is argent from the factory. This is the way it's supposed to be, and it is. It still retains its original argent finish. This real finite uh, trim around the entire perimeter of this grill, uh, anodized aluminum, and it is just as sweet and nice as you'd ever want to find. You can see the bumper fitment is... That baby is right on. There is absolutely no deviation whatsoever on that. Bumper, bumper fits as nice as you could possibly hope it to. does have the optional fog lights in the front. The front volance is nice also with the Argent uh, 
uh, colored insert to uh, complement the grill. Uh, they took a lot of detail in these cars. They made a lot of detail in them. Uh, you can see the Plymouth designation with the little red stripe down through the uh, center of the grill uh, horizontally. Uh, there's no marks on the bumper at all. The chrome is just impeccable on it. No deviations, no uh, marks from someone putting their foot up on it, their shoe up on it through the years. Front end of the car is just as nice as you will ever, ever find one. I don't see a deviation, a mark, uh, a chip, a ding. There's absolutely nothing. Let's try the driver's side, see if we can find something there for you. Okay, driver's side of our V-code um, CUDA. Side marker lights, just as nice and flush of fitment as you'd ever want to find. I'm getting shocked. <laughs> Wheel lip molding, really, really nice on this car. Door fitment could not possibly be any better. This is as sweet as it'll ever get. And the hood, hood to the fender, to the door, to the rocker panel, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Uh, it has, it's not an overlay, it's a real uh, original padded dash in this car with the correct VIN plate and the six sided rivets uh, retaining it. The uh, transition where the uh, dashboard goes on to the base of the windshield just as nice and clean and clear as you'd ever want to hope to find one. Uh, no cracks or anything evident on the dash. You don't see anything at all on the dashboard. No deviations, no uh, fading or warpage or anything. Obviously it has a vinyl top on it, a uh, black vinyl top. Tinted windshield in the front. Correct wiper arms and blades. You don't see them in the video, but they are tucked in underneath there, and they are the original style. Drip rail molding. No marks or dingies or, or anything on it. The vinyl top has absolutely no bubbling or, or uh, pulls or anything on it where it retains uh, uh, its, its fit to the uh, uh, drip rail. Wipes, whiskers, just really nice and sweet as you'd ever want to hope to find them. Uh, chrome on the door handles, really, really nice. Uh, chrome across the top of the door, there's no dents or dingies on it. It has a pair of uh, rally uh, mirrors on it also. Fitment to the uh, rocker panel, to the quarter panel. Look at this, this is totally amazing, the fit on this car. Wow. Nice car. Wheel lip molding the same as the front one. Absolutely no deviations whatsoever. Paint on this car is just absolutely stunning. Tinted glass appears to be tinted in the uh, rear window also. Again, the trim around the front window and the trim around this rear window. Both really nice. Uh, no marks from it being installed or anything. Just as nice as you'd ever want to find one. Really nice situation. Uh, rear marker light, same as the front one, nice fitment. 440 with the uh, hockey stick stripe on it, just as nice as you'd ever want to see. 15 inch rally wheels with the correct Argent centers on them. Uh, everybody wants rally wheels on these vehicles. Uh, no parts anymore, uh, any kind of aftermarket wheel, people get rid of them and they want to see a, a rally wheel on these cars. Trim rings are just as nice and uh, fresh looking as they could possibly be. Uh, BFG radial TA tires on it, which is what everyone's using on these uh, uh, collector cars at this point in time in white leather. Down the side of this car is just as laser straight as you could ever, ever hope to find one. Again, I'm standing at this angle and I don't see any doors on the car. It looks like one solid mass the entire uh, length of this vehicle from the rear to the front. Uh, there's not a single mark that I found on this car front or the driver's side. Let's go ahead back, see if we can find something there for you. Okay, rear, rear deck of our little Cuda. Again, the same as the front. Look at that fitment. That's just as nice and sweet as you'll ever find. And the paint on this is just, I wish there was some way that you could show the quality and fit and finish of a vehicle on a video. It's pretty difficult to do. Uh, even with the uh, finite uh, high resolution pictures that Devin puts up on the car. Uh, you can zoom in on them a little bit and, and see if you can see the, uh, uh, the fitment of the paint on this car and the fitment of the, the uh, panels. Absolutely out of this world. Uh, let's see. Keep pulling a 10K V arc on this thing. Uh, 
No marks on the uh, chrome, no patina or anything on the uh, chrome pieces for the uh, tail lights. Tail lights nice and shiny and bright as can be yet. Uh, Semi-flat black across the tail of it here. CUDA designation just the way it should be. Bumper et. Well, both of them fit. Usually these are offset one way or the other, just not a precision fit. These still retain their original uh, uh, style uh, molding that goes into the uh, uh, rear volance, and they have a nice centered fitment to them. Rear bumper, just like the front one, it's about as spot on as you could possibly, possibly find one. Rear volance has the correct style, big uh, rectangular uh, exhaust coming out through uh, the volance. There's no pull marks or anything on it. Uh, again, the paint underneath that just uh, is the same as the paint on the rest of this vehicle. You can see that the fitment, uh, the, the, the resolution of everything on the back end of this vehicle is as fine as you could possibly hope for on any vehicle. We got one more side left to go. Okay, starting at the rear of our 1970 V code uh, CUDA. Uh, well, I neglected to show you, this thing is all tin, um, and you'll see it uh, on the undercarriage uh, presentation that we're going to do. I did take a peek underneath this thing. Rear uh, quarter panel, the same as it was on the other side. The uh, trim around the window, the rear, just as nice as could be. The hat rack, which is absolutely as it was when it was released in 1970. Uh, whether it's the original one or a replacement, I really can't tell but it's, it's absolutely flawless. You cannot get it any better. The trim around this uh, vinyl top also is very nice. There's no marks or dinghies on it anywhere that I could see. Uh, and it, you can see, conforms over to the drip rail and makes just a nice uh, a perimeter for the, uh, the vinyl top on this vehicle. Fender lip, nice as you'll ever find one. Again, look at this door fitment. This is totally amazing, totally amazing. Wife's whiskers, same thing, absolutely flawless. Trim across the top of the door. Again, we have a right hand mirror. Door handle flawless, just like the other one. The fitment, the paint on this car is just totally, totally amazing. Look at this. It's totally amazing on this car, the way it fits. Again, the trim around the windshield. No marks. Look at this. You can't even feel a difference in the uh, fitment of these things. The door, to the quarter, to the front fender, to the hood, everything is spot on. The correct style Mopar antenna for 1970 uh, with the correct base on it. Wheel lip molding on the front, same as the other three, absolutely flawless. Side marker lamp, spot on, and we're back where we started. Just went over this entire vehicle, not one chip, not one mark, not one deviation. The fitment is spot on in every way. Uh, 15 inch rally wheels, uh, V code, 440 six pack, four speed Dana, 1970 CUDA. Uh, one of the most desired cars in the uh, muscle car market uh, today. A great color combination, um, very, very difficult car to find. Uh, this is not an inexpensive vehicle. This vehicle is uh, uh, a premium vehicle. Uh, the, it's not a vehicle that uh, was just stuck together. Uh, this thing is a complete rotisserie restoration, professionally done. And when you see our undercarriage presentation, uh, you'll see what I mean. I just took a peek underneath it so I have an idea of what it's going to look like once we put it up on a rack. Interior, uh, engine compartment, everything is as it was in 1970. Uh, when it was released by Chrysler Corporation. And again, these cars are extremely fast. They were one of the fastest cars that you could buy in that uh, late 60s, early 70s era. And again, 70 Cuda, one of the most iconic muscle cars ever. Uh, and in everyone's mind, one of the most desired uh, muscle cars ever. And this particular one is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And you can look for another one, but I guarantee you, you're not going to find one in better condition than this guy. Take a look at it. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. And this is the interior of one of the most iconic muscle cars ever produced. 1970 Cuda. And this guy's a 446-pack four-speed car. 
dashboard in this car is still resilient. It appears to be the original one that came with the car. It has its original air grabber. Uh, you can open and close the uh, cold air to the hood, um, to the engine. It has a rally instrumentation in it. It has a yeah, speedometer. It has a tachometer. It has a quadrant of gauges, fuel, temp, uh, amp, and uh, oil. And it has a clock on it. It has an original type uh, radio. I don't know if it works yet. We'll find out in our drive video. The seats are correct for this car, uh, front and back. And it also retains its original seat belts in the back and in the front of this vehicle. Uh, it has a console. Everything matches as it should. The uh, trim on the console is nice as can be. The original pistol grip for 1970 uh, shifter. Nice short one that Mopar put in these cars for you. Uh, the dash itself, the glove compartment and the dashboard lines up as can be. The molded door panels in the front are absolutely as new as they were in 1970. CUDA designation on them, remote control mirror. The uh, armrests aren't uh, cracked or deteriorated in any way. The uh, window cranks, your door opening uh, uh, bright wear is just as nice and sweet as you'd ever want to find. Has a uh, wood grain wheel in it, and this is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. It had to have been a, this had to have been redone. There's no way this could have been, well, it could be the original one. I, I really don't know. Um, the trident in the uh, center of the steering wheel, just as nice as can be. <laughs> Horn, it works. Uh, the bright wear around the clutch brake and gas and, and uh, emergency brake. Pedals are all nice and clean. Uh, carpeting uh, is appears to be the original, if not the original, it's the original style. Uh, black carpeting, there's no fade or deterioration whatsoever that I can detect on it. Has a set of yellow uh, embossed uh, CUDA uh, floor mats on it, front and rear. How about that? Uh, this car has uh, the original uh, shoulder belts that also came with the car. The uh, sun visors are Stitching is stitching's nice and tight on it, not coming apart at all yet. The day-night mirror doesn't have any milkiness or funky stuff behind there on it whatsoever. Tight as a drum uh, headliner on the vehicle. The trim around the back window is as nice as you'll ever find. This amazing car, and this is the most amazing thing about this car. This is a three-pedal car. This thing has a four-speed in it. So you got a tri-power, 440, Dana rear end, four-speed car. It does not get any better than that. If you're in a market for a high-end, absolutely nicer than it ever was in 1970 uh, when this car was released, the paint exemplary on this car. You have to take a look at this. It's the Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I can't imagine there can be too many more available in this condition anywhere. Uh, this is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. You really need to take a look at this car. I can't wait to get under it, actually, because I just took a peek, and I know this thing's a rotisserie, so I'm really anxious to get under the car to take a look at it and then drive it. So let's see if we can get that done for you. 70 V-Code, Plymouth Cuda. V-Code car, 446 pack, and a three-pedal car, too. Four-speed. Uh, we have windshield wipers that are functioning, just as they should. Okay, we have a tack that's working as it should. Uh, we have gauges, temperature gauge coming up, uh, oil pressure holding up high, uh, amp gauge functioning as it should. Oil or the uh, fuel showing empty. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like the gauge is up a little bit from the E mark, but uh, it's definitely definitely going to need some fuel in here. But we're going to go for a short ride anyway. Horn that works. Turn signal right. Turn signal left. Uh, remote mirror. It functions as it should. Radio, let's try the radio. That's wishful thinking. None of these usually work, but. Nope, radio didn't work. The radio does not function. Um, other than that, everything in this car is just as sweet and nice as could possibly be. We're going to go for a little ride, see how it performs, how it goes down the road straight, and brakes work, and 
Hopefully everything on this car is going to work as it should. I got some uh, Tranny shifts really nice and smooth, just as it should. Somebody just lost a flag, an umbrella or something. Car tracks down the road just as nice as can possibly be. I'll go, look, go to the steering wheel here in a second. Straight as an arrow down the road. Absolutely no deviation. I still have, I'm still off of it. Cool. Now let's try it. Uh, brakes, no hands. Everything fine. Nice straight round car. Very nice. All the gauges seem to work as they should. I'm tired of this thing falling off, huh? Really a nice tight running car. There's absolutely nothing that you can complain about on this one. Nice tight steering on it, new steering box. Uh, everything works just as it should. It's, uh, the brakes are really responsive to it. Uh, it feels like it's a stock motor. No one's cammed it or done anything with the exhaust. It, uh, it feels like it's uh, a complete uh, restoration on an all original 4.3 uh, six pack car. Careful! If I get caught speeding in this 35 mile an hour zone, uh, I'm going to be tied to the telephone pole and shot. So, uh, exercise a little bit of caution here about the crank on it too hard. We are underneath our 1970 V code 446 pack Cuda. And remember I said, I thought this thing, just from peeking under, it was a total rotisserie restoration. But check this out. This is done to the nth degree. There was no way that you could do a car any nicer than this car has been done. Um, correct sway bar in the front, new bushings. Um, correct uh, K member with the uh, uh, skid plate uh, welded to it. Uh, new steering box, new uh, idler arm, new pitman arm. Uh, new swing arms for the bottom, new spindles on the uh, uh, disc brake uh, in the front, new calipers, new hardware, <laughs> new tie rod ends. Of course the spindles have new ball joints on them, that goes without saying. Uh, no marks whatsoever on the uh, K member uh, or on the uh, front pan, uh, which is below the uh, radiator. Uh, itself, the uh, subframes in the uh, front, they don't have any mark, eh, one little tiny jack mark here. Let's see if there's one on this side. Yeah, there's one there, another one, little one there, just jack marks through the years, also another one there. Um, just from normal uses, jack marks through the years uh, from people lifting the car up to uh, work on it. It does have a gear reduction updated starter on it. Uh, a little deeper pan, that's why they put the skid plate on these 446 Baxton Hemi cars. Uh, they're the only ones that have this uh, uh, K member like this. Uh, as you can see, there's no leaks whatsoever in the engine. Absolutely not. Zero. Um, bell housing area the same way. Uh, it retains its original cover. Most of the time these covers are removed. Uh, this particular car uh, still retains it. Uh, Chrysler new process. Uh, uh, transmission heavy duty with a uh, uh, 440 and the uh, heavy car is a little different than the 383. Splines were a little different, uh, but the uh, gear ratios and everything are still the same. Uh, Hearst shifter, of course, all your linkage uh, uh, for the Hearst shifter. Uh, new transmission mount on the rear. Uh, new, let's see, yeah, new uh, engine mounts in the front. There's absolutely nothing that hasn't been addressed in this car. I can't see it, but I'm sure it has a new clutch and pressure plate in it also. 
Uh, no leaks of it whatsoever. And one little tiny drop here, it looks like from, I don't know, it's not coming out of, maybe out of the reverse light switch, possibly. It's not enough even to drip. There's a little dampness there. Uh, that's that's all there is. It's not even worth looking at. Um, stainless steel brake lines to, toward the rear, everything all new. Uh, all new. Uh, um, double fuel line for the return also for emissions uh, they started back in uh, 70. Uh, that's all new and it appears to be stainless steel also. Uh, floor pans themselves, already original floor pans uh, and just as nice and sweet as could possibly be painted just the way they would have been. They would have been oversprayed with the uh, factory color uh, with the uh, primer up through the center of the uh, uh, tunnel area. It has a correct cutout for your four speed there's a belly that comes off the side of the uh, <clears throat> the tunnel uh, for the uh, uh, linkage to fit. Uh, Mopar moves their, everything off to the left just a little bit. It's a little different than uh, what GM did. Uh, but uh, this one has that uh, originally from the factory and it still retains it. Uh, heavy duty torsion bars as you can see. Cast iron exhaust manifolds that they transition on to I'm going to call them two and a quarter. They may be two and a half. I'm not going to mic them. It's not that important, but uh, they're two and a quarter, two and a half uh, primary pipes. Uh, they appear to be aluminized. Uh, yeah, they're, they're aluminized as, as opposed to stainless. Uh, new uh, a U joint on the uh, drive shaft on the front. Uh, no leaks whatsoever on the uh, uh, tail shaft of the drive shaft. Uh, tail shaft of transmission to the drive shaft. Uh, there's absolutely nothing I can tell you that's uh, not correct on this car. Uh, no one's made any attempt to jack it up on the uh, uh, substructure uh, pans where it goes up onto the uh, uh, fender wells themselves. Those are usually uh, guys try to be a little lazy and not push a jack under far enough and they'll catch on there, but these are undisrupted. Um, and there's, there's just absolutely nothing other than a couple jack marks that would have been normal usage through the years. Uh, your seat belt uh, anchors and everything are correct just the way they should be. Your understructure of the uh, uh, floor pan still all intact and really nice where they uh, uh, go on to the uh, rocker panels and the rocker panel and the floor pan still have their original type uh, uh, pinch welds on from uh, uh, Chrysler yet. We're halfway through this car and honestly there's not one little thing. This is a total rotisserie restoration, there's no question. Every little minute detail has been attended to. Uh, all the correct crayon marks, all the correct uh, paint marks on everything. Uh, it's a uh, somewhat of a concourse quality car. I mean, everything is done to the nth degree in this car. Let's see what's on the second half. Okay, second half of our V-Code uh, Cuda, 1970. Um, <laughs> just everything. It's not one thing, it's everything. Done just to the nth degree. Subframes in the back, uh, a couple Marks here from where again, you know, jack stands or jacks through the years to uh, to raise the vehicle have been put. Uh, they just normal no, normal use is what you'd see on a car that that's 50 years old. Um, the torque boxes in the front uh, for the uh, spring mounts are nice and uh, uh, strong and undistorted. No one's jacked them up on those by any uh, uh, jacks or stands or anything through the years. Again, the rest of our uh, and they're all new cables uh, going to the rear for the emergency brake. Resonators, these are not mufflers, these are resonators. The mufflers are in the rear, they're uh, cylindrical. Um, these are the resonators that uh, Chrysler chose to put on the uh, 446 back in Hemi cars. They uh, cut down the sound a little bit. They started getting a little bit uh, funny, you know, the later you got in this muscle car era with emissions and with uh, uh, sound and uh, had to meet so many decibels and that's why these guys were at it. Drum brakes in the rear, finned uh, drums the way they should be. A Dana rear end of this car because it is a four speed that would have been standard equipment with a, uh, a 440, any 440 uh, four speed car or a 426 Hemi in a four speed. Uh, had this been a uh, automatic it would have had an eight and three quarter rim. But this guy is a nine and three quarter basically a three-quarter Dodge truck. There is no motor that will tear that rear end apart. That's a fantastic, uh, strongest rear that was ever uh, released in a production car. Uh, six leaves on the uh, driver's side, seven leaves to compensate for the torque bias when this thing's coming out of the gate uh, on the uh, right-hand side of the vehicle. 
Uh, the tape is still on the uh, rear end the way it should be. The markings on the springs and all the uh, suspension components just the way they would have been from the factory uh, Chrysler back in 1970. Uh, appears to have also, it, it, this car is hard to tell. Uh, it could be a replacement tank, it could be the original tank. I, I really can't uh, make a call either way. It looks like it's new. Um, pan across the back, there's no uh, um, deviations or pulls or anything on it. The subframes where they go up over the uh, uh, rear axle, rear differential, there's no marks or anything on them. They also still retain their original tie-down brackets that Chrysler used from the factory. Uh, they used to hook them into the frame and what happened from people tying the, the cars down and from working uh, in transit, uh, they would tear the frame sections, you know, the holes in the frame. So Chrysler started using uh, brackets that they actually bolted onto the frame and then uh, uh, didn't have to worry about tearing it. Um, new shocks in the front, new shocks in the back. There is nothing on this car that isn't new. Pans in the back are original and uh, this tab still on the drop downs and the quarter panels. Uh, floor pans in the back of this thing are just the way they were when they were new. Uh, this entire vehicle is uh, a complete rotisserie restoration on from what I can see an already uh, sound uh, original type uh, 1970 uh, chassis. Uh, the car has absolutely no uh, deficiencies whatsoever underneath. There's nothing. When you look up through this car, you see everything as it was. No one's rattle canned anything. No one sprayed or undercoated anything. No one's tried to hide anything. This is the way this car would have been released by Chrysler in 1970. Again, all the markings are correct on the car. Uh, everything on this vehicle is as it was from the factory. It painted uh, the same way it would have been uh, from the factory in 19. Uh, uh, 70 when the car was released. You're getting the best of the very, very best on this car. Uh, it's not something that you can uh, pick apart in any way. Uh, certainly it's not, uh, you know, it, it, we're talking about 50 year old technology, so it's not ever going to be the quality of a, a new Ferrari or a new Porsche. But this car is as nice a 1970 representation of a V code uh, Plymouth Cuda in a three pedal car, four speed car, that you will ever find. And it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And you gotta take a look at this car because it is an absolute, absolute knockout.